All right, thanks very much, Maria. Coming up on Cudlow and Company, a blood-curdling new poll says one in four young American Muslims condone suicide bombing. We will investigate. Still to come, a very scary new Pew poll says at least a quarter of young American Muslims actually believe suicide bombers are justified. This just sends chills down my spine. We're going to find out what is being done to squash this homegrown threat. We are for keeping America safe. And still to come after that, a new blood-curdling poll says as many as one in four young American Muslims condone suicide bombings against civilians. We've got a heated debate on what is being done to end this homegrown radicalist threat. We are for keeping America great and safe. Hello and company coming right back. Up next, a hair-raising number from the Pew Research Center. More than a quarter of young American Muslims condone suicide bombings. We are going to dig down and get to the bottom of this very scary story. You're watching CNBC. In a hair-raising number, the Pew Research Center reports on a new poll that as many as one in four young American Muslims condone suicide bombings against civilians, at least sometimes. This kind of homegrown radicalism is blood-curdling scary, and we have got to dig in and get to the bottom of this story. Joining us, Steve Emerson, NC terrorism analyst and author of Jihad Incorporated, a guide to militant Islam in the United States, and Adina Lekovich, communications director for the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Steve Emerson, I, this is a stunning thing, and there's some numbers here. You're talking about 117,000 Muslims between the ages of 18 and 29, and then 6% of those over 30 would add 63,000 more. So you're talking about just about 200,000 folks who believe in uh, suicide bombing. What do you make of this, Steve? Well, I think the numbers are absolutely frightening, and, and I, I've been warning about this, and so have others for a long time, and unfortunately, the the mainstream, in quotes, American Muslim leadership has been in denial. They've contended that there's only Islamophobia, that there's a war on Islam. And in fact, there's been a failure of the American Muslim leadership because they've portrayed the war against terrorism as a war against Islam. And that's radicalized the youth, Larry. Uh, if I may, uh, let me just ask Adina, if I may call you that, what is your response to Steve Emerson? And I guess I want to understand. Where is the sort of modern Muslim element that would try to close this sort of thing down? Well, they're right beneath our noses. If we look to the headline of the survey, what it points to is Muslim Americans, mostly mainstream, middle class, moderate, sharing American ideals and believing that hard work pays off in this country. That's the headline on this story. When we look at the statistic about suicide bombing, it is indeed a disturbing one. But taken out of context, it's even more frightening. You know, the University of Maryland did a poll just in December where they found that one in two Americans support sometimes with the same wording. They find it at least sometimes justified for innocent civilians to be targeted by bombings or attacks. I think that any sort of support, no matter what side it comes from, is absolutely outrageous. Well, and I when think, it comes to the Muslim American community, I Mr. Think, Emerson has it all wrong. I think you our, still our have Our condemnations to, of al-Qaeda, of have, suicide bombing, of terrorism are on record, the unequivocal, and that is the story of the mainstream Muslim community. We need to recognize and reinforce the mainstream rather than, uh, than, than doing so with the, with the marginal elements that we're all seeking to All right, to, but Steve uh, to, Emerson, to push. we just had this Fort Dix plot that was foiled. And this was a radical jihadist Muslim group. In fact, uh, unfortunately, three of them were illegal immigrants. But putting all that aside, where does this come from? Does this come from the mosques? Does this come from the, uh, the radical schools, the so-called madrasas? Does this come from the imams preaching this kind of hatred? And what are you going to do with 200,000 people who might believe this stuff? Well, I think the numbers are probably understated because to admit that you actually support suicide bombing, you know, it takes a lot of uh, intellectual honesty, so to speak, and I think it probably most people would not admit to that fact. And the reality is you see the number of people that believe that Arabs did not carry out the 9-11 attacks, I think somewhere like 40%. The institutional blame lies within the madrasa, the institutional leadership of the Muslim community, like MPAC, as well as the schools and the publications that have appeal to the American Muslim public. All right, you all are coming right back. Stay right, right where you are. No, hang on a second. We're going to take a brief commercial break and come back. I want to sure. know, what is the role of the imams in all this? We're for keeping America safe. Kudlow and company straight ahead. A very disturbing topic.
We're back with NBC terrorism expert Steve Emerson and Adina Lekovich of the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Adina, I have no doubt that you are right that the majority of Muslims living in the United States are moderates and peaceful. I don't doubt that. But this is a case where the minority is probably more important than the majority for the damage that they can do. And I want to ask you about another, right, that another disturbing part of that poll. Five percent, five percent of the survey shows that they have a favorable view of al-Qaeda. Now that is also incredible. How do you respond to that and what do you do about it? I'll tell you exactly what we're doing about it. I respond to it with, with abject horror, just as you do and just as all Americans do. And it is not representative of the mainstream Muslim community. 5% is, is a reality that we have to deal with. But getting back to the other questions, what are we doing about it? Nobody is fought, working harder to fight terrorism and extremism than the Muslim American community. We work with all levels of law enforcement. We work with our communities. We have a national grassroots campaign to fight terrorism that uh, Mr. Emerson is well aware of that is working with communities directly to ensure that extremism doesn't creep into our mosques and our community centers. The FBI knows it, the Department of Justice knows it, and why, why folks like Mr. Emerson can't recognize that is a puzzle to me because it's being recognized out there. We have to get Muslims to be part of the solution, and we do right, that let me let by Steve, recognizing let me let their Steve legitimate respond. efforts. No, uh, Steve, what is your response then? I want to also put another number in. It says in this poll, only four in 10 American Muslims say that they believe Arabs caused 9-11. Now, I don't know who they think caused it, but Steve, you know, the, we worry about the terrorist jihadists, the cells here in the United States. These numbers are really huge numbers. What is your response? Listen, let me read to you just three different points here. Um, one is the description of the 1983 Marine Barracks attack. The, this attack, for all the pain it caused, was not in, in a strict sense a terrorist operation. It was a military operation. That was published by MPAC. Number two, it described Mr. al Arian, the head of the Islamic Jihad Network, as a role model. And number three, this is something that Ms. Adina Letwekowicz should be very familiar with. When we hear someone refer to the great Mujahid, Osama bin Laden as a terrorist, we should defend our brother and refer to him as a freedom fighter, someone who has taken wealth and power to fight in Allah's cause and speak out against oppressors. This statement was made that, after the 98 bombing, and this was made that, in Al-Talib magazine, absurd. and that was Adina's, she was editor I, of the no, Al-Talib magazine when no, the statement was made. No, I was, was not. Made. These are lies. That's and not that a lie. You were no, editing these are absolute mischaracterization. No, you were managing Mr. editor Emerson, of the your newspaper. Research is, your research is sloppy. Your no, research were you not a managing sloppy. editor and of the newspaper? To, no, no, I, no, I was not. You were not? For your research. You, you were not on the byline for your as a managing research, editor? For your research to, to point out and to, to uh, d conduct this kind of character assassination Wait, is quite ridiculous. Adina, were you a managing editor? What we are editor? talking about here. Adina, were you a managing editor of Al Talib magazine? I was a student at UCLA, and I was the editor of the Daily Bruin. All right, we're going to have to leave so it. So that we're was the have campus to newspaper. We what we're talking it. about we here... We have to leave it there. Dean, I'm sorry. We've got to leave it there. We're up against a hard break. I will only say that these are probably the largest numbers I've ever seen about the potential for suicide bombers in the United States. And I think this story hurt the U.S. stock market today. Steve Emerson, thank you. Adina Lekovich, thank you. Up next, my last word. We're for keeping America great and for keeping it safe. Next up, Jimmy Kramer, 7 p.m., Melissa Francis. Tomorrow evening, we will have Dr. Henry Kissinger. There's lots to talk about uh, politically, militarily, and diplomatically in Iraq, Iran, and Syria. Look, I know the majority of Muslims living in this country are good folk, but it's the small handful of minorities that can wreak havoc and catastrophe. Homeland security, it is so important. See you tomorrow night.